Fallout New Vegas was one of our favorite games from last year. After all, who can argue with an open world filled with mutants and all the excitement of the Vegas Strip? And the downloadable content, including Dead Money and Honest Hearts, has kept the action in the Mojave Desert going strong ever since. The latest release, Old World Blues, takes the courier to an all-new location in the Mojave called The Big Empty and reintroduces us to some characters you may recognize from previous DLC. We went down to Burbank, California, where we chatted with our friends Jason Berkman of Bethesda and Chris Avalon of Obsidian about the new DLC. We even took part in a little voiceover recording action of our own. Are we being watched? For those of you that haven't played Fallout New Vegas, you're the courier, tasked with delivering a mysterious package. Long story short, you're left for dead in the desert after someone named Benny tries to kill you for it. The game centers around you trying to find out the why, the who, and what the heck this package is anyway. The first two expansion packs continue the courier's travels, though you don't have to play them, or Old World Blues, in any specific order. Give me the storyline of the new DLC. Well, in uh, DLC 3, uh, Old World Blues, uh, the player gets to go to a pre-war technological graveyard that's hidden in the Mojave Wasteland. And once they're there, they get to meet the caretakers of the facility that are running a great many experiments in the labs and on the player character. You wake up in the big empty, this area where pre-war, all these scientists got together to explore the limits of technology and push science as far as they could. Ultimately what they did is they took their brains and they became what's known as think tanks. So there are these floating brains with three monitors, one for each eye and one for a mouth. And so you wake up and the first thing you're told by one of them is that they've taken your brain. And the plot of Old World Blues is the player trying to do what the think tanks need them to do so that they can get their brain back. Did you retrieve the technologies yet? We need them, as I have indicated. When you're searching through the big empty, do you get to keep any of the cool swag that you find, like brand new weapons or outfits, anything like that? You get to both build cool new weapons and anything that you actually find in the big empty, you can take back to the Mojave. As an example, you're given this sonic emitter pistol very early on in the DLC, but you can upgrade it and fix it over the course of the game and use it to disrupt force fields in the big empty and gain access to new labs, new locations, and get even more powerful items, so it's pretty cool. How would you describe the tone in this DLC? Dead Money was very, very dark. Um, Honest Hearts, uh, we were going for much more of a religious feel in some of the environments and the portrayal of the character struggles in that. Um, Old World Blues brings much more of the dark humor back to Fallout. Uh, in this DLC, we sort of capitalized on that. And you're, you're, you're placed in a very deadly situation. You're surrounded by a number of scientific terrors, but at the same time, it's counterbalanced by some of the humor that you actually encounter in the DLC. A toaster is just a death ray with a smaller power supply. You'll be meeting lots of new human and non-human characters along the way. There's voices in the big empty. I want to talk to them. Lending his dulcet tones to the DLC is Roger Cross, an accomplished voice actor who has also had major screen time in TV shows like 24 and The L Word. I'm portraying Ulysses, and he's been alluded to over the first few, and in three you'll get a taste of him. He's a, a fellow courier, but he's probably a little wiser and more experienced. This character has been referenced repeatedly in both the original game and in Dead Money, but this is the first time we actually meet this other courier, whose life is so seemingly entrenched with our own. After all, he was supposed to deliver the package in the first place. For my voiceover debut, I played not one, not two, but three characters in Old World Blues. Listen for me warning you about health levels as a high-tech suit of armor. Stimpak reserves adequate. Charming the pants off you as a pair of sexy light switches. <laughs> of course, Dr. Mobius' brain is so big already, we had a hard time measuring it. And finally, as the newly found voice of Christine, a member of the Brotherhood of Steel. You may have met her before in your travels, but she couldn't talk. Until now. Brotherhood are preservationists. That's a keeper, I don't need another one. How often does it happen that a, a part that's been recorded is never actually even heard in the game because a player doesn't take that specific path? In the case of DLC, the light switches, for example, which, which you play. Ooh, you're back. I missed you. That's actually an optional character. One of the first quests the player gets is they have to go and find the various personalities for each of these appliances in the sink, which is this um, area the player has access to and can upgrade. And if the player never finds those personalities, they never get to hear 
your voice. Come on, you know you want to turn on the light switch. Mmm, that was a nice little uh, cat nap. So whether you end up talking to fretful sinks, testy toasters, or sexy light switches, we hope you have as much fun playing the game as we did playing our own roles in Old World Blues. <laughs>